Hello guys, I'm Naval Yemul. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Data Master. So in this video, we are going to see part two of the Unity catalog. Once you, once you enable, once you enable the Unity catalog, we'll see how it looks like in your Databricks workspace. So for that, let me go to my Databricks workspace here. I'll just refresh this. I'll refresh this entire page. Yeah, so let me go to the catalog explorer now. It is called as a catalog explorer now. It was a data explorer before. Let me click on the catalog explorer. So the moment you come to a catalog explorer, now your couple of things got changed. Let me quickly show you here. We had a previous one. Oh, it is also getting refreshed. No worries. So you got a hive meta store that is by default. Uh, catalog but within that uh, or now we got a sample and a systems and a main so these are the catalogs that got created once we created a meta store and you can see the meta store name is ny meta store so the moment we create a catalog or a unity catalog we enable the unity catalog we get an button here called creating a catalog so we can start creating a catalog so let me show you my previous databricks account just to show you how the difference is in the catalog. So this is my uh, previous account where Unity catalog is not enabled. Unity catalog is not enabled. So you won't able to uh, see the data and you won't able to get a meta store, something like that. Here you can see that meta store and you won't able to get that button also like create catalog from the UI. So even you can create a catalog by using a UI or you can create a catalog by using a notebook style. Okay, you can do both the things. Okay, so I just wanted to show you the moment we created an Unity catalog. Let us see what is happening there inside our containers. Uh, let me go in the containers and we created a new container for this that is meta store. Let me click on the meta store and we have a metadata here within that metadata you can see uh, there's no data still because we haven't created anything but once we create we can see some metadata that is getting stored here so let me try to create a new catalog by using a ui so let me click on create a catalog it is asking me a catalog name so i'll just give a catalog name called development here and it is asking me the standard or the foreign so a standard is it contains table views function and other objects and your foreign is Found and query the foreign uh, data objects like MySQL and SQL Server and so on. Let me keep it standard for now. And here it is asking you a storage location. Like, okay, you are creating a catalog that is dev. Where do you want to store all your locations or your data? So I do not have any storage location. By default, it is showing you meta store default location. But uh, you can see here. Default location will be your container name, your storage account name, and your metadata. So within that, it will create all this new folder. So if you want to arrange it in a proper sequence, you can go and create your storage location from here. Let me click on cancel. And here you get an external data. In the external data option, you get an storage credentials. So you can create your own credentials here by clicking on this. Create a name of that and give an access connectors and so on okay so maybe we will create an external uh, connection or external storage later on but let us try to create a catalog now first so let me give development and here let me choose a meta a meta store default location and this will be my default location let me click on create so yeah so it is throwing you an error that it overlaps your managed storage within your create catalog call. So I think we need to create a new storage storage location and we need to give that uh, storage location here. So for that, let me go back to the external data and here let me create an external location. So here, let me click on OK. Uh, so I'll just repeat it again, guys. So in the external data, I want to create a new or external location. So the moment I click on it, it is asking you the external location name so i'll just say all the catalogs i'll be storing all the catalogs and where 
what would be your URL. So if you remember, we have copied, the, we have savedly kept a URL here. So let me write it here. So it will start with a b f s s. That is your drivers a b f s s dot slash. Okay, let me just check it once again. Yeah, a b f s s and inside that there is a path metadata is there. So let me create one more directory inside this. Inside a metadata, let me create a new directory called as a catalog. Let me click on save. Oh. Within this, I will choose. Okay, I'll choose metadata in that we have a catalog. Cool. So it is asking you the storage credentials. Let me pick up this student credentials and let me click on create. So you have successfully created a external location with a name called catalog has been created. Okay. So the moment we created an external location, now let me come to the catalog. Let me check now. So let me write development and here I'll pick up a catalog, the storage location which I have created. Let me click on create. So the moment I created, you got a new catalog here and you can see the development catalog is ready. Uh, in that, whenever you create a catalog, you will get a default schema that is your name as a default and you get an information schema. So all the details can be uh, seen here in the information schema. We'll come to this point and here you can see schema details permissions. Now you can start granting the permissions for this catalog and for this database or the schema and within the uh, objects within that schema, you can do all that. So you can see workspaces, uh, specify which workspace can you access with this catalog, all the workspaces I can access. So let me go back to my workspace now. Let me open that in a new tab. Within this, I do not have any schema. If you wish to create a schema, you can create it by UI or you can create it by notebook also. We will do both the things, but now let me do it by using a UI. So here it was asking you creating a schema. So I'll just write as a test schema and where do you want to store it again? So I'll just pick it as a meta uh, catalog. So I'll be arranging it in a proper way. So in the catalog, I am giving a schema name as a test. So I will store all the metadata inside this test. Let me click on create. Yeah, so your schema is created. So if you want to re uh, let me refresh here yeah and now you get a refresh button here you can see it's easy now to refresh your catalog easily so that is available again when you enable the unity catalog so when you go inside a uh, development catalog within that you have a test schema there is no tables within that so let me click on this schema and you can see in that we have a tables so we want to we will just create a sample table from here let me click on create a sample, new sample data. Oh, it will take me to the Databricks SQL if I'm not wrong. Uh, so it will create, like we need some SQL warehouses for that. Yeah, it will take you to the Databricks SQL guys. So maybe we will do it by ourselves. We will not take an example. It will take a long time again. So we need to start your SQL warehouse and then execute this query. It will take a long time will not go till that point. So I have already created one notebook. What I'll do, I'll start creating a table within that catalog, within that schema by using a notebook style in a SQL. Okay, just give me a second. This, so if you remember, this is your Databricks AI that we have seen in our part one, like how to enable that. The moment we enable, we get this and where you can use an assistive, like you can write, start writing a prompt and it will help you a lot. So we will see that later on. Okay, so now I'll just say person SQL and I'll say use catalog dev. Let me run this. So now I am using the catalog development and so you can see uh, the moment I write it, it is throwing me an error saying that catalog not found exception. So you might see that there is a catalog here. You can see in the catalog 
uh, is throwing you an error here. SQL editor, my SQL API browser is not started. Yeah, let me go to the catalog. The moment I go to the catalog, I can see the catalog, guys. I can see the catalog. Uh, so can I create a new catalog by notebook? Yes, you can do that. But but there's a small hack here. Very very important. Many enterprises get a difficulty here. So you can see you cannot use that catalog. It is saying that catalog is not defined. Or if you say that, uh, can I create a new catalog? So let me write new SQL query, create a catalog, catalog, and the name of the catalog is suppose let me write UAT for the testing. So the moment I write it, uh, it will throw you an error again. It says the unity catalog is not enabled for this cluster. Now you might say that I have done everything. Unity catalog is enabled. I can create a catalog by using a UI, but why not by using a notebook? Now, this is really important guys, because you need to enable uh, that you need to have a cluster in that cluster. There should be an option called unity catalog. So now with this cluster, you cannot create any objects or you cannot uh, use the unity catalog. The reason is the cluster. Let me go back to the compute and in the compute, let me click on my cluster that is up and that is running. Let me click on edit, edit here. So in the edit here, you can see single user. We do not have the cluster. Uh, we do not have unity catalog option now. Yeah. So now you can see I just refreshed it. So for single user, you get an option here in a summary. It is showing you unity catalog. So if you go for no isolation shared, so uh, in the access mode, like no isolation shared means we all developers can use this cluster with all the languages. So if you choose the no isolation shared, there is no support for this access mode to use the unity catalog here. So you need to either use a single user So maybe for single user, you will get a unity catalog or for the shared, you can use a unity catalog, but uh, for shared, you need to switch to the multi node single node won't work for the shared and not only this. When you use this access mode as shared, you can use only Python and SQL. So all your shell commands and all your uh, Scala are won't work in this shared access mode. So for that, you need to uh, create a different cluster for no, no, no isolation shared and then use that uh, where you don't want to use any unity catalog and then you can use this shared if you want to enable the unity catalog. Now let me click on the single user. So it works now. You can see the summary. We got a unity catalog. Just you confirm and restart. Yes, at the uh, like uh, in, before also we I my cluster was in the access mode as a single user. Still it was a single node, but just it need a quick refresh to get a unity catalog. So I have just confirmed and restart. And the moment we uh, get started with this cluster, you can go and create a new. Uh, no new catalog, new schemas, new tables, everything within that. Because now this cluster, my cluster will support a Unity catalog. So here you can see now my cluster is enabled for Unity catalog. You can see that. Uh, you, now let us go back to my workspace. I have only one notebook that is up and running. Let me open that. And let me go scroll down and we got an error here. Now let me copy this, paste it here and execute this now, execute now. So the moment I execute it, now we got a, a you will create a new catalog within a meta store. We can see an output saying OK. So let me uh, quickly check it here, here in the, let me refresh this. You got a UAT catalog here. Within that catalog, you have a databases and all those. Things. So let me go back to the notebook. And if you remember, we were not able to create a, a table where we had a primary key. Let me scroll down, scroll down, and paste it here. 
So now instead of using just a table name, we need to use a three level namespace. You can find it directly from this catalog tab here. You can access it here also. Let me collapse this. And in the development, we have a test schema. So let me take up this schema name here. Copy the schema part and let me paste it here. So it is development catalog dot test as a schema name dot table name as demo. We are using a three level namespace. Create table that will create table inside a catalog dev inside that testing a uh, test schema inside that demo with a primary key so without unity catalog this was uh, not able to execute because table constants are not possible in the hive meta store you can see in the hive meta store it is not possible but now we created a unity catalog with a different catalog uh, can we create a table with the table constraints let us check that cool cool you can see that so let me refresh here refresh the catalog so you get number of uh, options to refresh here quickly you got a data uh, demo database and uh, sorry the demo table you can refresh here and you can just quickly check inside a dev test table one that is your demo table and now uh, what is my interest is to show you there is a primary key here you can see that you can add a beautiful comments also here, hey, this is an, just an employee ID. You can add some important comments on the column name. Let me click on save, and you can see, hey, this is an employee ID. You can quickly look at the sample data. There is no data still here. Let me go to the details, and it is a managed table. Yeah, is that a managed table? Yes, it is a managed table. How? Because we did not give any location. If we give a location, it will become an external table. Okay, manage table, but where is your data getting stored? Where is your data getting stored? Is that in a DBFS? No, no. Even though it is a manage table, all your data, metadata that is getting stored in your meta uh, metadata in your ADLS. So whatever the path you have given, all is stored here. So even though it is managed, so if you are just thinking out of Unity catalog. If it is a managed table, all your data, metadata will be stored within the DBFS. But if you are talking about Unity catalog, even though it is managed table, everything is getting stored in your ADLS, the path which you have given when you are setting up an external location. So can you prove me that? Okay, let me go back to the meta store. Let me just have a quick refresh on this directory here. There is a one metadata here. You have a catalog, you have a test, and you have a unity storage. Within that, you have a schema, you have one schema, and you get the tables, and your metadata is stored here. So you know that it, if it is a delta logs, then it is a delta table. Yeah, there is no parquet files because there is no data yet. So once we insert the data, then we can play around with that. So permission now you can set up all the permissions you can grant them you can revoke it so that is only possible only with the unity catalog otherwise in the hive meta store it do not support the permission let me click on grant so do you want to grant the permission so if you remember in part one we had it one user so if you want you can add this user you can grant him the entire permissions you can modify all the privileges so we will talk about these permissions in a minute. You get a history, you get a lineage, and you get us insights also. So th this is all possible when you uh, like when you enable the Unity catalog. Uh, apart from this, we have a lot of other things need to be proved, like how the uh, data, like how it helps for the data lineage, data discoverability. Yeah, I have proved you the table constraints, how the data governance, like permissions and data access control, it can be worked. I'll show you all that now in a part three. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next part. Thank you. Keep learning.